My name is Dr. Sean Healy. I'm a clinical psychologist with Lawyers Concerned for Lawyers of Massachusetts. Uh, we're a lawyer's assistance program, and we serve law students, lawyers, judges, legal professionals, and immediate family members in the state of Massachusetts. And uh, my role as a psychologist on staff is that I meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. I do uh, short-term consultations. I do workshops, groups, presentations try to uh, share information that's helpful to those uh, people that we serve uh, on the topics of well-being, self-care, stress management, treatment, sort of uh, addressing uh, the person's mental, emotional, and physical health so that they can be as successful as they can in their profession. <music> Lawyers in general have a, a pretty high rate of stress. I think particularly because of the pandemic and having to change how they do what they do, as well as um, how this impacted their their work, uh, I see a, a range of of responses uh, to the to the current situation. So oftentimes, lawyers who are in a position of helping others tend to neglect themselves in service of helping others, uh, and it and you see this across the board um, for in different areas of law. It doesn't have to be just those who are working with a, a client in person. And so oftentimes that, that mindset of I need to take care of myself and I need to prioritize take care of myself in order to do my job the best that I can it is, a, is a significant shift in, in how lawyers think about being the best that they can. So oftentimes the emphasis is Emphasis is on, um, you know, the work itself, right? Gaining certain experiences, working hard hours, putting in the time in service of the client, as opposed to really valuing themselves as the resource and therefore taking care of themselves in a way that allows them to do the work that they want to do. The most essential things that we need for our overall health and well-being. And uh, what I see a lot through uh, just in, with busy professionals is that sleep is seen as, you know, something that is like somewhat annoying. Like I need it, but, you know, I don't really value it. It would be great if I didn't need as much. If I could just, you know, work more, sleep less, life would be great. Uh, and, and really that's counterproductive to, to view sleep as, like a necessary evil that I just need to work into my day. Sleep is so valuable for our functioning. It, it's the time where our bodies are recharging. It's the time where our immune system really has full reign to repair our bodies, to recharge. Um, without good sleep and, and consistent sleep, you, you see uh, negative impacts in our functioning across the board. So it affects our physical coordination. It affects our ability to focus, our ability to problem solve. It affects our emotional stability. Um, it, it affects every aspect of ourselves. And one of the things that I am often talking to lawyers about is really valuing sleep as an essential ingredient in their well-being, but also in their professional um, their professional behavior. So. Uh, I, I tell people to, to view sleep as if it's uh, one of the most important appointments of your day. So schedule time for your sleep as if you're scheduling a very important meeting that you would never back out of. And when we value sleep like that, then we start to uh, implement certain behaviors and routines that increase the quality of our sleep. So in terms of starting to improve your sleep, uh, one of the important things is to, is to examine what gets in the way of good sleep. So it's gonna be different for everybody. For some of us, you know, it's uh, the change in routine where like the pandemic uh, has affected our, our workplace so that we're working in the same place that we're supposed to be relaxing at home. And so we don't have a clear distinction between work and non-work time in the space that we're in. For others, like myself, having small kids, they disrupt your sleep. Uh, for other people, it's going to be 
uh, the issue of valuing sleep. Like, I, I don't think I need as much sleep, therefore I'm not going to prioritize it. So first is to just recognize what gets in the way of good sleep. The second thing is to try to establish a routine, a consistent routine. Uh, we call this sleep hygiene, but basically all it is is a consistent routine that we implement prior to going to bed. And what, we, what that does is we start to create an association between our behaviors and the goal of getting to sleep. Right, so we're training our brain to get ready to go to sleep before we even get into bed. And those routines can be things like you know, doing the same thing in the same order every single night. So brushing your teeth, you know, getting your PJs on, taking a shower, whatever it is that you do as part of preparation for bed. Do it in the same order at the same time. And then consistent, if you're consistent with that, your brain starts to prepare for sleep. Right. And then look at um, little behavioral changes, such as giving yourself time to unwind. Many of us who are busy, what we do is we sort of go, 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 and then we try to fall asleep instantly. And uh, many people have trouble falling asleep because our brains are still going. Like we're still active. So giving ourselves time to wind down, to have some screen-free time. Right, giving ourselves time to relax as part of that routine can really be helpful in preparing ourselves physically and, and uh, mentally and emotionally for sleep. For other people, uh, one of the things that comes up a lot is uh, I'm sort of busy during the day. And as soon as I lay down, that's when all of a sudden I, I try to shut my mind off, but then my anxious thoughts rush in. And it's like, now, I'm finally trying to shut down, but now my brain won't let me, and I, I feels, it feels powerless. Right? So one of the things I recommend is, if that's a consistent experience for you, you know it's going to happen, work into your routine, like prior to doing those, those behaviors that you're, you're leading up to sleep, schedule time to worry. Schedule time to get that stuff out of your head. Either write it down, sometimes it's a to-do list. So things that you want to remember later, get that out of your head. Sometimes it's just a worry, like things that I, I'm not going to be able to do anything about, but it's on my mind. So get that stuff out too. And just practice getting it out so you're not like keeping it in the back of your mind because it's going to come out anyway. Might as well have some control over when that comes out. And then get into that routine of relaxing, you know, leading up to bedtime and then uh, getting into bed. And try to, try to reserve your bed for sleep. So again, because we're working at home, a lot of us are doing multiple things in that space. So the more that you can reserve your bed for sleep, that's just going to increase that association that our brains are making between bed and sleep. So I, when I get into bed, my brain knows what I'm going to do, as opposed to, you know, if I read in bed, if I do work in bed, if I check email in bed, my brain doesn't know what I'm about to do when I get in. We live in a digital age and uh, our, our phones are our workspaces. So the screens that we're engaging in uh, affect us in different ways. One is the light, right? So when, uh, when you're trying to relax and, and get ready to sleep, uh, just the light from your screens is gonna activate your brain. So a lot of devices have like a, a blue light filter or a, a night setting where it dims. So I'd encourage people to, to use those. The other way that it affects us is the content that we're looking at is going to make us feel a certain way, right? Make us think a certain way. So if we're checking email, right, in bed or right up to bed, that's going to make us think about, you know, what we need to do, maybe stir up anxiety about uh, what's on our plate for tomorrow or what, how I'm going to respond. So it's important to pay attention to the content as well. My strong recommendation is to start with telling yourself, you don't need your device at night. When you go to bed, you don't need it. All right? part, of, part of that uh, hesitation to put the device down or away is that, what if, what if I need it? What if I miss something? And so start with just telling yourself, I'm gonna be okay without knowing if emails come in while I'm asleep, right? You don't need to know that. Uh, I highly recommend putting your device beyond reach 
setting it to a do not disturb. So you're not getting buzz, you're not getting dings, your attention's not being drawn to it. If you use your device as an alarm, uh, set the alarm, but move it away so that you can't just automatically pick it up to check the time, to check email. So that's usually what happens is like the snowball effect of what time is it? Oh, well, I might as well look at a couple of things. I'm not sleeping anyway, which then wakes you up. So the more that you can free yourself from that temptation of pick up a device and engage with your device, the easier it is to get into a habit of relaxation and prioritizing your sleep. So charge your phone on the other side of the room, set the do not disturb. If you have digital clocks, even turning those around so you can't see them can be helpful because you're not engaging your brain in math. Like, oh, this time, you know, I'm not asleep right now. I should be asleep. Like that, that will wake you up. So the more that you can sort of take a break from that information and prioritize just relaxing and uh, trying to get sleep, the better.